Well, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome in here to Flying with Mike. We are debuting yet another aircraft. Uh, I do not believe we have streamed yet with the A319. We've had it for a couple of flights out of stream, but uh, today we're going to actually fly it. We're going to test fly it, but we're also going to do a little challenge to X-Plane. Uh, we are under real world weather. Now, we're going to go back about two or three months, maybe. We were flying into a town down in South America. The uh, weather the whole time was just hovering above minimums, both real METARs versus simulator. But uh, so we decided to make the run on the approach, and it should have been above me uh, minimums. And it wasn't. Come to find out, it looked like the METARs that were running in the sim were two to three hours old versus real world conditions. So we're going to test it out today. Reason being, I just got off work a few hours earlier ago and th not this flight, but another Allegiant flight coming into mid-America um, came into some pretty low uh, ceilings. So I want to see just how good X-Plane 11, mind you, not the new one that we hope to see here soon. <clears throat> how good is it? Welcome aboard, Mr. Hawker. Sorry to say your favorite plane is on the line. So uh, we are going to be pushing back here momentarily in the A319. Here in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, heading up to Mid-America Airport, where we hope to encounter some uh, low ceilings. So we'll see how that works out. Um, for all I know, it'll burn off the METARs and the SIM will match up. And this was a complete bust. So, but anyway, we will have fun in the bus. So <clears throat> anyway, so we... Uh, also, real quick, before we get into the office, uh, today we did schedule a five-hour flight in the 747. That is the flight we're postponing. Tomorrow's flight, Saturday, was to be this one. We're, we're pushing it up mainly because of weather and some outside things going on that uh, uh, probably would make it tough to do the five hours in flight. So uh, tomorrow's flight right now stands canceled. <clears throat> uh, do have some uh, uh, things going on that just will not uh, allow me to even fire up. So, so with all of that said, all of the uh, uh, paperwork, office work put aside, let's get up in the office and go fly with Mike. Why don't we? My computer screen over here decided to go a little funky on me. I just noticed it changed on me. All right, let's try that again. All right, everything's locked up again. There it goes. All right, welcome to the A3 Nights, folks. It looks just like an A320. Actually, for those of you with the 340, it's going to look the same. Minus the fact there's only two engines here versus the four but overall airbus kept it simple that way so 
Um, so anyway, we are up and running here. We do have the uh, round power hooked up. And uh, we're to the point, as you can see in the checklist, of loading the FMC, or the FMC to you Boeing guys and McDo to you Airbus guys. <clears throat> so, with that, let's pull Sim Toolkit up. Do a quick look at what we're doing today and look at that weather between Myrtle Beach and Mid-America. And if you don't know where that is, follow the line. I'd say the yellow brick road, but it's blue. Um, but yeah, we got a little bit of line of thunderstorms to cut through between Indianapolis and Nashville. But uh, then we'll get into this low ceilings. Now, right now, the sun's popping out here. So like I said, we're going to see... Uh, what we run into. I got a late jump today. A lot of things came, happened up, and it is what it is. You know, we can't change what's going on, but we can look at the load sheet. 120, uh, 125 brave souls aboard with Flying with Mike. Uh, payload, 27,500 pounds, roughly. So you see the zero fuel weight ZFW. And... Uh, once we add in the fuel weight here, we get the ramp weight. 16,871 pounds of go-go juice. So, now they're calling us to cruise a cost index of 5. Uh, well, we'll kind of see if that's what I decide. And a cruise level of 38,000. I think we might go for that. We'll see. Uh, rounding that one out real quick, here's the rest of the numbers as of, uh, I think this is two hours old. Um, we're looking at about 600 and almost 700 miles. Average wind at our back. Why am I getting? Oh, I see. Average uh, wind, 311 um, at 8. So really, we don't have much of a wind to dis to, to work with. I see Hawker's enjoying the METAR feature. Um, and uh, again, a breakdown of the fuel, and we're going to get going. Oh, might as well go a couple more. Should we uh, have to break away and go to Indy because of uh, the weather? There's our routing. We'll be going to BIB, Bible Grove, onto the Racer 6 arrival. So that's if we have to go. Otherwise, we're going to be going uh, Florence to Sparta to, uh, I can't remember, something hills, and then to Nashville and in. So here we go, folks. Let's clear it up and add all of this in. Uh, Beach traffic, so that's runway no, that's here. Let's see if we can see him real quick. I sure don't see anyone. Oh, well. That was always worth a look. All right, so let's. what I like to do is just pull up the uh, FMC and work at it here, not try and finagle it. Unfortunately, Zebo requires us to do that, but I like the ability to pull it up and put it right in my face. I'm going to pull it down just a little so I don't bump that. All right, so we're going to just follow. We've already brightened it. Aircraft model, uh, CF, uh, where are we at? Okay, so that's missing. But the engine rating, oh, that's all down here, um, is all looking good. Nav database, though, that is, oh, there's the aircraft, Dur 112. Um, so here's the big thing I look at. Nav database active, and then the cycle. Make sure those match what you're running, folks. Then down here, make sure your performance is le uh, less than or equal to 6%. Oh, we're way less than that, so we're good. Check, 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 and check. All right, so now click the initialization page. I leave this up so you all can see what we're doing. We're going K, M, 
y r slash kilo bravo lima victor oh we missed the b somehow try it again k e l e <clears throat> now if you had an alternate route you could throw it in here to your alternate i'm just going to put the alternate in here k i n d or indy all right now our cost index we said five oh what the heck let's go with it and then i did that accidentally cruise level thirty-eight thousand and a temperature um and you know what let's get some toolkit out of the way even though it's not in the way right now it will be uh let me take a look here i'm just going to go to the sim brief real quick i can get the temperature pretty easy temperature 38 52 52 it looks like minus 52 is the winner Oops. Helps to format it correctly. F L three. Actually, I think I can do it this way. Three eight zero diagonal negative five two. Perfect. Tropo. That I cannot pull up from here, folks. Uh, so we'll just go with the default. Now, if you're in Simbrief. When you're doing your formatting, let me kind of show this off, because what I'm going to do is go ahead and make the change. Hopefully it doesn't throw us out of whack. Um, no, instead I'm not. We're just going to go with it as is. We'll try and catch it at a later day. And then we'll get our wind requests. Okay, can't ever get that second one. We'll align the IRS didn't have to go any further it did it already it was ready to go all right so we're set ready to go we'll run some check marks down here basically giving you the flow that goes with this now we go to flight plan disconnect so what we do is click f plan and then i'm going to stick the route in first then we'll come back get the departure put the arrival and go on from there. So real quick here. All right, so flow. Fox Lima Oscar, right where it says F plan discontinuity. Now, a couple of tricks here. Now, real world, I'd have my uh, map out. Look at these, make sure they match. Um, actually, I am doing that here. Florence is uh, 11520. Coordinates roughly 3416 or 3479. Yep, this is it. But the trigger is right here, folks. That's how far away it is. Obviously, these two are probably over in Italy or thereabouts. Which would definitely be one. Uh, Sparta Greenberg, uh, Greenville. Sparta is a 115. Okay, so let's see what happens. S P A. Look at all of those that come up. But again, 169, and it's 1157. So boom. Pretty easy flight plan to put in. ODF down here. Foothills, that's what it was. Whoop, 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 whoop. Whoa, 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 whoa. F plan, thank you. <laughs> that one went right in, so we're good. And then, and that's about right for the mileage. <clears throat> Next one up will be BNA. Again, the 409 seems like the best one to go for. 1410, 36 by 86. That's the that's the winner. Then we click up. 
We're going to be putting our final fix in. Echo November Lima Centralia. And that's clear of that. And there it's loaded. Now the flight plan itself is loaded, folks. So now let's turn our attention to arrivals, departures. Well, we don't really have a departure out of Myrtle. Oh, went the wrong way. Dink, 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 dink. Okay, so we'll still click it. Click departure. Runway 18, no SID. And insert. And then clear up any discontinuities. Okay, and insert. Okay, finally, take it down to BLV, click Arrival. Now, <laughs> we're going to plan runway 14 left, and we're going to plan ILS, even though it's out of service. And we're going to go ahead and plan coming off Troy. All right, so that sets us up there. Again, we'll click in. Looking for any discontinuities. Okay, and we'll hit F plan one more time. Done all these. Got the runway in. Got the arrival. So now we're going to actually do a check. To do this, this way we can pull this up. This is basically this nav display. Just gives it bigger and the pilots out there in the Airbus are going, boy, I wish we could do that. Man, that would make it easy on my eyes. You're right. Keep the uh, range at 20, but we're going to switch the um, uh, nav mode from arc to plan. And basically, just like you guys in the Boeing do, we're doing the same thing here in the Airbus, except we don't have a step button here. We just use the up arrow. Make sure our flight plan, first off, does not have any discontinuities. Second off, doesn't go off to Florence, uh, Italy. So we click the up arrow. Everything's looking good. There's our arrival. Right on into the runway. Looks good. Click F plan. Click that. Pull that back. And we'll keep that set. So. And we went through the route. Okay. Uh, we are a VOR, VOR, so we're good. Oh, we're going to go to the nav page. Sorry. All right, so everything's good. No courses. We're good. There's our ILS out of here. If Should we have to come back? So everything looks good. Okay, now we go to the INT. How, what is this? A, B stuff, right? Click these side arrows we're going to go to the right now we're on where we can put in the zfw uh cg center of gravity block fuel and all of that all right so we go to tolus to the uh isis screen Make sure your numbers haven't changed, and I want to write these down in case I have to use them again. All right, so ZFW's coming in at 5.7, and CG 28.6. Now, this is your zero fuel weight. This is not takeoff. Okay, there's a different CG value here when you're ready for takeoff. 
Okay, so we're good. Enter these values on the INT E page. Now I know it doesn't say E up here. Sometimes it catches me off guard and does. So we're going to put it in in a format you see. So 1175. One one seven point. Technically, I should round up. Slash two eight point six. Put that in here. Block fuel seventeen. Point zero. Now that's not what we were scheduled, but that's the closest we could get it. Okay, and then we're going to... Okay, so now we're going to look at our route reserve fuel. Okay, and our final fuel. All looking good. and close all right so now we're getting to the part where we plan and is this our second okay i don't do this so hang on mainly because i don't fully know how to do it that's why All right, so now we're going to do the takeoff data. So we go to performance. Oh, right. Now, one thing I didn't think to set up, I should have. Great, it is set to go. All right. All right, so let me uh, get the browser up, and we're going to take a look at the performance we expect this plane to do. Now, we're going to be filling in V1, VR, V rotate, your flaps, your uh, horizontal stabilizer, if we're flexing or not, and so forth. All right, so you see uh, Sky Vector up here. Here's our lovely route for the day. Coming up right up along. Got a good segment here, segment there, segment everywhere. So, you know, we're going to be bouncing around thunderstorms. Little Lex 293, am I a real pilot? Yes and no. Yes being I do have a PPL, private pilot license. No, I am not current. So I do know how to fly. Um, and... Uh, I do know the basics, but in the instrument world, uh, no. So, and I do need to get current by flying with an instructor a few hours, and I want to take uh, ground school again. So, welcome aboard. Thanks for the uh, um, first time chat, by the way. <laughs> yeah, we need to fix the currency issue. We need about $1,000. All right, so let me go to a, a page here and uh, see if I remember the command I put in here. This is a link to it. Um, basically what you do here, folks, you come in, set the aircraft we're using. We're in the A319, now technically not a 132. We're gonna go with it. First off, switch to pounds. Okay, and then gross weight. Pull up that TOLUS page again. Am I going to be able to get that from there? Just thought about that. I did not think so. Hmm. Okay, well, let me pull it up a different way. Go to the SIM brief 133.937. CG 20, I think I just wrote that down, 28.6. We're 
going to go with 1F. Actually, you know what? Let me do something here real quick. The A320, I flare at about... Uh, I start flaring at 50 feet. Um, just about every aircraft, that's when you start flaring. Because all you're doing is just lift in the Airbus and airliners. You're going to lift the nose up slightly. Now, Cessna's, Pipers, and such, you're actually coming in nose down. They're coming in nose up slightly. So it's just a little up. So... You're just basically getting it so the nose gear doesn't touch and getting it to slow, descend and slow at the same time. So, yeah, if you watch the 737s, unless it's flying with Mike and he's nose diving for the ground um, to get in on the runway, right? Uh, but if you do it correctly, the nose will usually come in a nice two to three degrees and then you'll pull up to about six for the flare. All right, let me pull up my window again. All right, so what I wanted to do is get the METAR real quick. In Myrtle, we are 140 at 9, so dry runway. Okay, so yeah, 30 degrees. I think we can get away with 1F. Air conditioner obviously will be running. K-M-Y-R. K. Runway length. Good old time for the chart program to come in. Let's take a look over here. I've got the charts coming up. Airport for Myrtle Beach. We're going to need that 26 feet. And our main runway is 9503 feet. So set that first. 9503. And heading 177. I always love how they're. Is that right? 26? Did I read that right? 25. Ah, we can work close enough. Let's make it a 25. Q&H, 1023. You know, the easy, if you're not wanting to do the math, and this ain't a math class, folks, so guess what? I don't want to do the math. Back to the grind, Hawker. Thank you so much for coming out. Hope you, uh, your day turns better. Just keep this in the back of your mind. It's Friday! <laughs> that, that should stick, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> Have a good one, Hawker. All right. Last thing I was working... Oh, the, the uh, Q&H. see what Sky Vector's running us at. 3022. All right. Now, if you remember, the chart says in hepapascals. Well, the easiest way so you don't have to do the math. Hey, 1023. Look at that. It's right. <laughs> don't have to do the math that way, folks. Keeping it simple here, folks. Keeping it simple. All right. So we need temperature. And wind, wind one four. I think that's all right. Let me double check again with sky vector temperature. Oh, we got lightning in the distance. Okay, so we have a storm coming. Thirty and um, one forty at eight. So that all is correct. Okay, once you have all of this loaded the way you want. Now sometimes you'll turn the the anti ice on the plane is is actually automatic in most respects the, as I've been listening to okay who's pinging me uh, 
Oh, that means I need to check over here. That's what that's all about, folks. When you get that warning, check to make sure you're on both sides accurately. Also, this one needs to be changed. 30, 22. There we go. All right. Okay, so there it's telling you what your information is. One forty so this tells you what this page should look like now. So let me help this out. Now my voice has come down. My wife has a phone call, so <laughs> uh, I fly it all the time on the sim with the side stick, so alright. Let's do something here. Click, whoop, not that, that. All right, so now I'm going to make it a little bigger. So what we're going to do is make this look like this. So to do that, all you do, V1. Uh, it's 141. I think rotates the same. Uh, V2 is 148. Transition level, incorrect. It's 18,000. Middle, okay. Now, they're calling trim down zero. Um, let's see what toll is called. I think it tells us. All right, so departing runway 18. Okay, now their numbers are a little different. I think I'm going to stick in house here. 139, 139, 141. One, three, nine, one, four, one. Eighteen thousand stays the same. Flaps one slash up point one. Here we go. I think we're doing fine because we haven't gotten any nasty grams yet. 66. Okay. So everything entered in here packs will be on. Okay, we knew that. Okay. So it's just interesting how sometimes you use toga thrust. Oh, okay. And then we can set our slope if we would know it. So anyway, folks, okay, so that's how we're going to set. Now, you can use both. This works to a point and sometimes does not. In this case, it's best. I'm going to stay with the in-house software because it should know what it's doing. All right, let's go ahead and pull the browser out. Okay, so next up on the checklist. Okay, so we got the Q and H. Here we go. It's like, where are we? Okay, we got our flex, our V1, V rotate, V2. You can see those right there. 
rust reductions. Okay, now this, folks, I leave usually as default. I don't even go with what that page shows me. Now, if you're flying in Europe, a uh, guy by the name of Black uh, Handle, Black uh, Box 711, he has a website with many of the, he's a real world Airbus pilot with just about every European airport out there that Airbus 320, 319, 320s and all fly into. And he'll break it down. The formulas, I guess, the figures this up, tell you what you can put in there. It's a really good site to use. Uh, in this case, being in the U.S., he's only got a handful of airports here. So that's why we're just going to go click, click, click. Same with the acceleration height. And there you go, folks. We are programmed. The only thing left, and I thought it did that, just okay, it's coming up. All right, so that takes care of everything here. We can actually just get rid of that. Okay, so let's pick the flow up here, folks. We're getting close to pushback time. Seven minutes. So, cockpit door, we don't, you know, right now, all the peoples are aboard. Cockpit doors closed. Going to go ahead and move the button down to locked. Start tracking client. That is, see that right there? That's my reminder. Let's go over here to current bids. Click on it. A319 to Mid America. Fly the bid. Find the uh, aircraft I want. Sure appreciate that. Sorry, I am looking for is my airplane. It's like right up at the top. You know, that's what I get for thinking. I should have learned that from the military. Quit thinking. You, you know, it always gets you into trouble. Ah, today, where are you? About ready to pick one. There it is. Load. 125 for the peeps. 38,000 for the top out altitude. Are you kidding? <laughs> oh, Lord have mercy. And let's go ahead and start because we're ready to go. So we'll turn that off. That shouldn't bother us anymore. Okay, so that's active. Cockpit door is locked. All right, let's get that APU switched on. Done all our fire checks prior. Two. It'll switch up. It's already on APU. Waiting for flap open. There's flap open. We'll just come right up here, click start, come right back down. Once it starts, we should see, I believe it's uh, 115 volts and the hertz should be positive. I want to say 400, but I may be thinking other aircraft. But again, little X, uh, uh, 293, thanks for the follow. And while we're awaiting here, gives you a little bit of an idea. We're right on the corner. Okay, there we go. So now you see 
the 115 volts and then the 400 there. The cool thing is, folks, that's all done. I don't have to go up and click APU Gen. All done, set, ready to go. Plus, I saw the bleed error ready. So now we'll go... Uh, okay, we did the oxygen mask already. Lighting, adjust. We'll keep it as is. I, uh, LS active. This one I don't get, but they want it. Okay, nav display back to arc. Set the range as you want. So we've got... I'm going to set it for 20. Nav switches. VOR. VOR, that's the way I like it. Barometer set to local. CSTR, or constraints. What that means is, as you look at that flight plan, as we go... Well, let's pull it up over on the other side. Legs. Uh... You'll see altitudes here. They'll display here next to the to the fixes. Uh, do I want that on perf or here? And yeah, we'll go with that for now. Okay. Um, and then, as we're continuing. So anyway, with the constraints, any altitudes that show up there, they'll show on your display. Speed manage, you want to look for the dot. It's there, it's in manage mode, same with heading. So we don't have to touch anything. Altitude, <laughs> here we go. All right, I think we'll initial out of here at five and then continue on. Okay, now on the first officer side, pretty much same thing, folks. Okay, we're going to go arc and we'll keep it at 40. Barometer set. Flight, does, flight director and LS are on. Cockpit lighting and the mask has been checked. Okay. So now we're set now we're set here. So let's go to the overhead. Okay. Coming up this side, we're doing a quick check. We're going to go to uh ground control here and do a test of the recorder. Perfect. A320 from Flight Factor, you go, yes, Captain. Okay, seatbelt's on. As I figured out, I do not think there is an auto on this one. Okay, working our way up here, looking for any flags or anything to tell us. Come back down. We're on auto for the strobes. Now, you can do this either way. Captain. First officer, so if the captain's pilot flying, put it on one. First officer, put it on two. As the checklist you see there on the screen says, you could use one for daylight, two for night, if you plan to rotate. Just keeps the lights going because you got two sets of lights in each wingtip. So it just allows each one to burn equally. If one's off, turn the other one on, see if it works. The rest of the lights are off. Going through here, everything's looking good. And our engine faults here because the engines aren't running. Turn the bleed on. And we can come off external power. We're now on the internal. And let's get these doors closed. Now, this interactive control system, folks, you can see has a ton of things you can work through. I'll leave that up to you in the manual. I'm going to ground service, and I am going to go close, close, close. Now, you can set them to auto, but I always go way over. 
and it sometimes does trigger two specific events. Let's go ahead and pull the jetway away. Better pushback on the way. Route of cockpit. Please show me where you want to go. Boy, I really don't know how they push back here. Especially in that stand. Um... Just go something like this. Ground to cockpit. Toe is driving up. All right. And uh, real quick check. We are running. There's our tug. Right there. Don't be surprised if it runs through a building or two. Let's do a weather check real quick, folks. Um get these briefings knocked out. Chalks away, first off. Oh, where were they? Oh, here they are. Chalks off. Okay, all doors and hatches are closed, ready to connect. Clear to connect. All right, so the weather here. Do I actually usually land on the center line? For the virtual FAA listening, yes. In reality, I'm usually off by 10 to 20 feet. I call it, I usually land like a fighter. If you've ever seen a two-ship landing. One on either side of the center line. Okay, again, one four zero at eight, ten miles of visibility, thirty degrees, thirty twenty two, and we have lightning in the distance southwest. All right, so that could be an interesting departure. So connected and bypass pin inserted. Release parking brake. Okay, today we'll take off on runway one eight. There is no SID. We have. 17,000 pounds of fuel on board. We'll be going flaps. One, and what they call 1F when we set them. Meaning one notch on the flap, one on the slat, I believe is how that translates. And uh, V1, V2, V uh, V1, V rotate, V2 is right here. Boom, boom, boom. 39, 39, 41. And, uh... Let's get going. We're on the right frequencies. Let's see if we have Jacksonville is available. Oh, yippee ki -yay. Hang on a second. I think we are in Jacksonville. Where is my map? Oh, and I actually have an ATIS. One twenty three, nine twenty five. Somebody's paying attention. He uh, pretty close to my backup frequency here. Uh, making sure. Uh, 123. 
925. I got nothing. And Volanta's showing nothing. One, two, three. Nine, two, five. Got nothing. All right, so we're going to Jacksonville. 119. Five, five, zero. Jacksonville Center, uh, Allegiant 2691 with you at Myrtle Beach. Request clearance to Mid-America Airport, KBLV. On 35. How do, oh, I read Indies. Nine two five. Uh, we'll get it right yet, folks. I uh, will get checking on the traffic. Five twenty five. What's up? Right, one more time. Three nine two five is not working. One last check with Velanta. Velanta usually will show it to you if it's available. It's not. Okay. Well, we're going to not worry. Just say, could get the ATIS. Jacksonville Center, Allegiant 2691 on the ground, Myrtle Beach. Quest clearance to uh, Kilo Bravo, Lima, Victor, Mid America. Sixty three ninety two runway clear land. There's a two one kilo runway five for the takeoff for runway heading. Allegiant twenty six ninety one Jacksonville Center clear to the Bravo Lima Victor Airport as filed. Maintain three thousand. Expect flight level three eight zero one zero minutes after departure. Departure frequency is with me, squawk 1032, read back squawk only. 1032 for Allegiant uh, 2631. Correction, 2691. <laughs> Time to 6392, taxi to the ramp via hotel. Have a good night. Allegiant uh, 2691, readback's correct. Uh, runway 18 for departure, Alpha Skirt. Copy, unable to get the uh, ATIS uh, 18, and we'll try to get the weather off Sky Vector. 
Okay, we got that. That. Let's get up here, get our initial down to three. Okay. We are at two set, set uh, ready to go. Again. Okay, and straight up for the beacon. I switched over to uh, 123925, got nothing over my uh, system. Okay, so no, no voice then? No voice, no text, uh, nothing, but I can get it from Sky Vector. All right, thank you. Get a SIG, okay. Southwest, Still the uh, Southwest 103, that's behind the Jackson, there's more than one would like to get out to you. Two thousand five hundred. Don't forget to restrict your air to six gear. Mace 1-1, descend 18,500. Columbia altimeter is still 3019. Down to 2,500. Yep, it's me. <laughs> and uh, Jacksonville Center Allegiant uh, 2691, uh, did we need to call for push and start? Allegiant 2691, negative, just call for taxi. Roger, uh, pushing and starting for your own uh, knowledge, we'll call for taxi though. Beacons on. Beep, beep from the tug below us. And fire cuff once again. All right, so here we go, folks. Brakes on. There's a two one kilometer contact climbing ten five thousand. Turn left, quick brake. Push back, and you may start engines. Okay, we're gonna kind of watch this. Always love to watch how I set these up. Let's see if they come close. Out of the gate, 15 minutes late. Not bad. Blame it on the uh, ground crew. <laughs> Sorry, couldn't resist. <laughs> Okay, can do that a little closer. That'll work. Okay. I just like seeing what I need to adjust next time if I come back to Myrtle and getting out of this gate. Uh, turn. Thank you. <laughs> I'm like, turn. <laughs> and Mace 1-1, one, one, let's plan on the visual approach runway 1-1. One, one. And uh, you need anything... Or you want uh, anything different than just the visual? Sorry, Mace, one one second. <laughs> All right, Mace, one yeah, one little one X. Second. Yeah, we're, we're like, come on, got to turn. <laughs> So we can pick up the pace here a little bit. Okay, the mode selector folks that it's saying here is right here. We're just like any Airbus folks, so if you've flown these before, you you know them. 
There's our page. Everything's got air. Let's start number two. Challenger 1, Mike Charlie Kramer, it's on request. Twin Cessna 414, Fox Shot Lima, Jacksonville Center, clear to the Bravo Kilo Victor Airport as filed. Maintain 1,500, expect 4,000, one zero minutes after departure. Departure frequencies with me, squawk 1004, read back squawk only. Okay, you can see everything spooling there. Four five Lima, read back is correct. Runway three six left. Call back ready for taxi. Disconnecting tow. Stand by. Challenger one Mike Charlie, cleared to the Panama City Airport. Jet and two departure caps transition, and is filed. Maintain three thousand. I expect flight level two eight zero one zero minutes after departure. Departure frequency is with me. Squawk one zero two seven. Read back. Squawk only. On Mike Charlie, read back is correct. Runway 8. Okay, now connection. that we got available on number 2, we can actually crank up number 1. I like to let things settle down. Cranking number 1. Disconnected and bypass pin has been removed. Hand signal will be on the right. We'll see you next time and have a great flight. Okay. As we're spooling up here, folks, while we're engaged, you're going to see this in gray. That's allowing you to see the spool up. When it says avail up here, then the engine's available. And switched over on the gen. All that Base good stuff. Base 4 Roger. Break altitude is 1,500. Enter and report a three mile initial. Three mile initial. Okay, available. Okay, so we monitored. Okay, Chrono yes, start. This is flight 25. I'm able to keep flying. I have to disconnect. I uh, just can't my my plan, please. APU bleed uh, off. Thanks, sir, for your APU service. APU off. Trim wheel. Uh, and is requesting taxi. Up one. Okay, now this, folks, is real easy. Right, Southwest 3350. Southwest 3350 for feature reference. That sim is top down control. If I'm online, I control all the way down to clearance delivery. So you need to call me for taxi. Uh, runway 8, taxi via Papa, November, Lima. Jacksonville, altimeter 3015. Okay, speed brakes. To arm them, just need to see the white band. Go to 1. Rudder trim, push. That just resets it. All right, push back, crew disconnect. Oh, you're not the first one to mistake it, but this goes for everybody on frequency. A PDC does not give you permission to taxi. See it all the time. No worries. All right, so real quick. This is showing all of our surfaces. So it says elevators sorry, first. Two and two, Roger. I'm sorry, say that last part again. All right, Empire two and two, Roger. We'll uh, have trucks on standby. No 
number four one four Fox Trot Lima Squawk. Let Charlie for me, please. I'll get you guys. Down wind sim is back Go in the <laughs> car. <laughs> Welcome aboard. All right, so we got everything checked out here. Come off the flight plan page. Okay, weather radar, we can turn that on. Southwest 2425, good. Okay, we'll keep it mode. Auto brakes. Just kick over here to max. And. Alright, so we just need the cabin crew to check in. And all you got to do for that, folks, in this plane is. Base 11 one, one, wind 110 one, at 7. And then we just push the take off. Check wheels down, runway 11, one, one, clear to land. Okay, we're ready to taxi. Okay, Like dining is Lion's Choice. I didn't know we splurged that much on a Legion. <laughs> uh, all right, so. And Myrtle, uh, Jacksonville Center, uh, Legion 2691, ready to taxi. Allegiant 2691, runway 18, taxi via Alpha. Via Alpha to runway 18, Allegiant 2691. Kind of Legion 685, Jacksonville Center, hello, squawk 1062. Looks like we got a little jump jet over there. Southwest 3350, runway 8, clear for takeoff, flying runway heading. While we taxi. Allegiant 685, radar contact 45 miles south of the VOR, maintain flight 340. Holy crap. Where'd that come from? 
Southwest 103 are back in the flight deck. Southwest 103, Roger. Well, what about that? Someone put a runway. This didn't match up to my map. Twin Cessna 4, Fox Shot Lima, turn left, heading 270, runway 35, or correction 36, left, cliff takeoff. Well, we're going to use the grass a little bit. Challenger, what am I, Charlie? Runway 8, line up and wait. Now, how I knew that real quick, folks, that hold line was right in front of me, and it told me to the Alpha, have Cross that, that's an incursion. Empire 210, Roger. Because I don't think I can get off midfield. Empire 210, Roger. For some reason, my map said there was another taxiway. Southwest 2425, push and starts at your discretion, call back for taxi. Okay, we're ready. Contact ATC when we're there. Southwest 3350, stay altitude. Alright. Southwest 3350, radar contact, climb and maintain flight level 380, turn left direct Kimmel. Challenger 1, Mike Charlie, fly runway heading, runway 8, clear for takeoff, caution vector, departed 7.37. Fire 210, runway 10, zero, clear to land, uh, wind 0707. Yeah, this scenery isn't matching up with the chart <laughs> at all. Twin Cessna 4, Fox Shot Lima, say altitude. Altitude. Our Fox Shot Lima, your radar contact, climb and maintain 4000, proceed direct webs. Jacksonville Center Allegiant 2691. We're ready to go at the uh, at 18 Myrtle Beach. Allegiant 2691. Fly runway heading. Runway 18 cleared for takeoff. Runway heading cleared for takeoff. Allegiant 2691. Challenger 1 Mike Charlie, say altitude. Altitude. Challenger 1 Mike Charlie, day I'm contact, gonna do. turn right direct jetton. Right turn direct jetting on the maintain flight level 280. Empire 210 to the ramp at your discretion. Here we go. Okay. Till the runway. Here we go. Again, cleared for takeoff. 139, 139, 141. 18,000s transition, 3,000s initial. Here we go. Jacksonville Center, when you get a chance, 
5200 Jacksonville Center, cleared to the Washington Reagan National Airport, Dallas file. Climb maintain 3000, flight level 27010 minutes after departure. Departures with me, squawk 1066, read back squawk only. 066, blue street 5200. Blue street 5200, read back's correct, runway 18, call back for taxi. Blue street 5200. Southwest 581, Jacksonville Center, clearance is on request. And Allegiant 2691, say altitude passing. Allegiant 2691, uh, through 600 Zero. for 3000. Allegiant 2691, your radar contact, turn left direct. Florence, climb to flight level 380. Up to flight level 380, direct uh, left turn, you said, to Florence. Legion 2691, you can actually make that a right turn. I'll be a little quicker for you. Right turn to Florence. Okay, right turn to Florence, uh, Legion uh, 2691. Southwest 581, you're clear to the Baltimore Washington Airport. Swamp Fox 2 departure, Philly transition, then it's filed. Maintain 4000, expect flight level 390, 10 minutes after departure. Departure frequency is with me, squawk 1044, read back squawk only. Southwest 581, read back is correct. Runway 15 for departure, call back ready for taxi. Okay, after takeoff checklist. Okay, thrust climb, flap speed brakes disarmed. The flaps are zero confirmed. Westwind 3592 Jacksonville Center, here to the uh, Freeport Airport. So I'll get you departure, Ormond Beach transition, then it's filed. Maintain 3000, expect flight level 21010 minutes after departure. Departure frequency is with me, squawk 1065, free back squawk only. West one thirty five ninety two squawk creep back is correct. Runway eight for departure. Call back ready for taxi. All right, folks, we are on the way. Hang on a second here. Ten thousand feet. Southwest twenty four twenty five runway eight taxi via Juliet Alpha Lima. Seatbelt signs are not coming off till we hit top of cruise. Uh, LS can come off. Southwest 581, runway 15, taxi via Alpha. 
Hotel Delta, cross runway 21. Okay, and now I am going to come down here. Southwest 1363, you should have got a PDC, check your private messages. Jacksville Center is going to step off frequency for about two minutes. Be right back. Okay, everything looks good, folks. Uh, okay. All right, next up will be the 18,000 foot mark for a direct Florence climbing uh, to 38,000. Uh, us. Actually, we have weather in the area. Let's take a look. And let's turn that down to hard, folks. Out of Myrtle Beach for Mid-America. We're going to see. The big thing today's flight is, is how well does the uh, oh, real world weather stack up when it comes in. You know? Try and explain again. Okay, first off, standard. Um, I work out at Mid-America Airport, um, and today Allegiant came in, really interesting the way they worked into the airport from uh, Punta Gorda, but uh, as they came around for 3-2 eventually, uh, mainly because the minimums are lower, um, they reported 200 feet above minimums for their arrival. So. That sparked me after a flight a couple of months ago into South America where we were actually below minimums. But we shot it with the Autoland flight sim. The virtual FAA was asleep at the wheel like always. And, uh, you know, no, nothing came of it. But it was a good lesson. Um, I want to see if that's how it will report. Now, granted... About six hours have elapsed since that landing, so there's a good chance. Back then, we attested the, uh, it was, should have been above minimums, by the way, in South America. But I attested to the reason it wasn't as much of the flight was below. So, we th our thoughts were real world weather here is actually a couple hours behind. So, turn him down just a smidge. Westwind 3592, runway 8, taxi via Golf, Alpha, Lima. There we go. Anyway, we had tested it back then. As we flew to that airport in South America, most of the flight we were below minimums. But, uh, about an hour before getting to it, it came up, and that's why we shot the approach. Southwest but again, we were below. Fly runway heading, runway eight, clear for takeoff. So we're curious, is the same going to happen here, or has so enough time sure elapsed that the METARs cleaned up to where it's very legal? We're going to find out in about an hour and a half. So, as we climb out, let Southwest me... Southwest 3536, radar contact, 28 miles, pause the Grand Strand VOR, maintain flight level 400. 
So that's the reasoning here. So, and I am going to get back into chat, and I do apologize. I've been kind of more focused on the flight. And, uh... Not so much the, uh... Not so much the uh, chat window. My apologies on that, folks. Let me see what I have missed. Okay, um, yeah, as to some of the content that's been out here, um, it's in the chat as well. I don't tolerate what's, uh, what I was seeing while I was taking off. Sorry, I don't look at it much, uh, but yeah, we don't tolerate that here. And we're uh, uh, glad she's alive, but the content prior to that, no. Uh, that can, you know, no, we don't take that here. And keeps up, I will exercise the moderating correct. rules I'm allowed, so uh, please refrain from that. If this channel's a little too harsh, sorry, uh, but I keep it as available for a family. I have grandchild, grandkids, you know, I don't, and other people do too here, and kids, let alone their own. They don't need to hear stuff. So please refrain. Two on kilo. Okay, uh, Savannah altimeter is three zero one seven, and uh, you can just send a maintain at pilot's discretion to send a maintain two thousand. Okay, thirty eight and. Tango Bravo on the ground at Myrtle Beach. Look at the pickup. I have Fargo, Tampa. 
20 taken forever. Check. As soon as we level off, I just wanted to get the fuel level. All right, let's try something here. Map should be showing clouds and precipitation. Let's just do. Roger, switching to Unicom. Thanks for the ATC. Bye now. Center Allegiant 685. Uh, can I get away from that? All right, folks, that turns that down. All right, we're on our way. Uh, and let's get down here, set these up. Okay. And ladies and gentlemen, this is the captain speaking. We've reached our cruise altitude of 38,000. Uh, please remain in your seats with your seatbelts fastened. Well, if you're in your seats with your seatbelts fastened. Otherwise, you are free to move about the cabin to use the restrooms one at a time. Other than that, we hope you all listen to your flight attendants, enjoy the great service, and we'll be chalking with you soon. Thanks for flying Allegiant. Okay, as promised, let's do a quick system check. Okay, what we're going to do is basically run through them all by clicking all. If you click it individually, it lets you check the page, and then you click it again, it goes to the next page, just right down the line. 
And we're actually not at cruise, but it's close enough. Okay, everything looks good. Next one. Okay. Next, this shows you how the electricity goes from the engine generators into the uh, AC essentials and DC essentials. Now, this page is actually kind of important when you run into hydraulic issues. Okay, first off, it's showing you how your pressures are, and they're looking good here. They're green. Same with down here. However, if say this says zero on the blue, so that means blue's out. Uh, what, you know, from my standpoint, public safety, what does that mean you have available to use? Is your landing gear gonna come out? Are your flaps, spoilers? Eh, don't worry too much about them. Uh, can you turn the plane? Can you go up? Can you go down? You know, pretty fundamental things to know so that me set up on the runway there know what to expect are we expecting a crash are we expecting a heart you know an incident you know what are what what are we looking for do you have here's the ultimate one do you have brakes now folks most of you driving a car that's the brake pedal on the left side you all shove the right one down thinking it's the brake and hit buildings but that's what this page is good for fuel we just went through that we uh, just got us pretty done you know as best we could in getting equaled out here on fuel then we have the APU should be off and is off now this is the one that tells the pilot temperatures in the back right now I'm showing 69 degrees and we're in Fahrenheit or 71 in the cockpit, 69 in the back. So let's go up top here. Slide it just a little. Let's turn the cockpit down one. It's going to start cooling. I'm going to turn the cabin up. I'm pretty sure we're going to be getting complaints. Oh my gosh, it's just so cold. It's so cold. Burr. It's an iceberg back here. Burr. So we'll kick it up a little. Now granted, it doesn't move immediately. Now we're 70. And we'll keep an eyeball on it. We're going to check our transponder here while it's saying. Hang on a second. Put that away. All right, so now the transponder needs to read below. Okay, so that means I'm also going to tick our uh, radar down a little. Okay, well, let's take a look. Oop, I need to pull that page up again. See what that came up to. Okay, we're 68 in the cockpit, 71 in the uh, cabin. That's a pretty not too bad when you think about it. That's really not too bad. So we'll leave it at that. Okay, so we'll click all again. Now we're seeing the doors. Everything slid, or slides are armed, and the doors closed. Oxygen is just that cockpit so if we have a decompression we have to don our mask to do the emergency descent we have plenty of uh, uh, PSI there for us to breathe to get us down this is not the system that deploys in the cabin for the crews this is separate from them or for the passengers Okay, simple, covers are over the wheels, brake temperatures look good. Again, this is the surfaces out there. Um, so you got your speed brakes, systems controlling these, uh, trim, rudder, so forth. Now, if you notice on here, GBY, 
BG. You know what that is? That's your hydraulic systems. Green, blue, yellow. So if you lose the blue in the example we were using, well, we don't have spoilers. This aileron, this right one, so turning the plane could be tough. Oh, up and down could be tough. We'll say why it's not completely, as is the rudder. Just because you lost the blue doesn't mean they're gone. Look, the ailerons are also controlled by the green. So is the rudder, so is the elevator. The goal here is to never lose everything like they did in Sioux City and Cartwheel, if you remember that back from the 80s. As you notice, the up and down, you have yellow over here. So, throughout it, that allows you to have that ability, folks. So, that's why we have the ability in, in the uh, firehouse to talk to the pilot and say, tell me, what do you got? What are we expecting? You know, you could say, well, my radar unit blew up. Well, okay, now the the fine radar unit blew up in this plane because it's all in one gauge. It's all right here. <laughs> so define that for me, please. Now, other aircraft, there is a gauge right there. It's just strictly radar. Poof. That, you know, that's, see what I'm saying? How things are different in planes. And believe me, the pilot won't say that. Oh, the radar unit blew up in my face. Okay. No. More than like they're going to say, one of my CRTs blew up into my face because that's primarily what are on these planes now. Then we click all again. It takes us to the status page. Normal. Recall. Clear. We're good. Back to the beginning. We are at 380, folks. So we're going to kind of ease on down the road now to uh, uh, Mid-America. We've got about an hour-ish in the air to go. Get there a little, about 30 minutes or so out, we'll go through the arrival. It's a real simple one. Um, the real world plan, even though the active runway was 1-4 left this morning, because the minimum requirement for your approach is higher higher on that runway than 3-2 right the opposite end they came in with the tailwind and uh, phenomenal job they did um, I mean to me they did that thing called the pilot thing you know they did their job and good job though appreciate the getting in there I mean a couple minutes late because they had to you know do what they did to get on the other runway but I mean that's what they're paid to do folks and, uh, and they did it well so but yeah we'll go through it here in a minute uh, like I said give it about 45 minutes or so we'll 
30 minutes or so we'll uh, get at it because I just realized yeah it is an hour or so and folks uh, we'll be right back with you uh, I need to go use the laboratory so we'll be right back place where you feel the fire's gone now in time we will heal and life will pour out again 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 life will pour out again 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 when the darkness surrounds the night without sound we'll pull the wool down we'll be together again 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 be together again 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 no we're gonna rise Again. We got each other like a friend And every time you think the end is near You'll see the tides can turn And we will rise again
chips are down and you're losing hope the light will surround and show you the road again 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 show you the road again 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 wait for the sunrise and open your eyes if we give it time life will be so bright again 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 life will be bright again 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 no we're gonna ride All right, folks, sorry about that. Got intercepted by a grandchild. So, took a little longer to get back. Apologize again. But anyway, uh, about 51 minutes to go as we cruise into, uh, looks like we're headed up now to
Oh, we're off to... Are we off to Foothills now? Looks like. And then Nashville and then Centralia. Like I said, though, this is a... I mean, we'll go through it. I mean, there is some stuff to this arrival, but overall, it is not all that bad. Uh, we're going to go ahead and pull the chart off there right now. We'll replace it with a bit of Volanta here down in the corner. One, you can kind of see where we are. Let me uh, get it up on my end here. Zoom down just a bit more. So we're going from ODF now to... Oh, we just passed Foothills. Okay, so now we're headed to Nashville see all of this uh, that we're going to be going through. And I'm kind of curious how it's showing up. So let's bring up the map in X-Plane. One day I am just going to go where it's really Okay, so we do have some rain up here by CSV, which is Inch Metal Crossville. Okay. So I'm just trying to see how it shows up on here. Okay, and then we'll be seeing if that translates down here to us. Oh, there we go, we have some rain. They're on map mode, so technically it would show coastlines and all. Now, Airbus guys that are like me that did could not figure out when they watch streams how in the world was Mr. Magoo putting the uh, terrain up on the screen? Well, if I do it here, it's going to get rid of the rain. It's right there. Now it's building in the terrain around us. Right now we're going over some hills. Let's dial it down. Give it a second to reset, and you can see it. That's hills. Turn it off. We're back on the radar. Can't seem to figure out if there's a way to do it with both. I thought they could. And I'm sure there is a lot more for me to learn. Like getting over here. Like, I haven't figured out what that one does on the ND, but yeah. Anyway, so you're now seeing rain out there, which is what I wanted to first test out here. Okay, cool. First cool. All right, now we're going to see if the weather matches right now. So we're talking sky vector. I gotta get, there's Chattanooga, Crossville would be up here somewhere, there's Nashville.
Okay, so where that's showing up, currently, the uh, METAR reads calm 10 miles, broken 11,000. Okay, so that's east. Distant lightning northeast. Uh, so that's past. Uh, hang on, I forget, I can always do this. Yep. So, yeah, we are seeing a little bit of that delay. Okay, so that's, that is confirmed. Okay. Now, we'll see with X-Plane 12. Now, I don't know what it would take for a developer in a general program like X-Plane would take to get the weather to look I mean, not exactly. I'm not looking for it to be, if it says it's 200 feet out there, it better be 200 feet on my screen. Otherwise, I want my money back. No, <laughs> I'm not looking for that, folks. What I'm looking for is if thunderstorms. Okay, I've got thunderstorms here. I want to know so I can kind of work my way through. For instance, say these were here then I could fear to the left here, of course, work around them and come back. That's what I would be wanting to look for. And uh, we'll see what X.12, they're promising a lot, folks. We'll see uh, how well they uh, get held to the fire. I mean, I mean, it's I'm not going to sit here and complain if it's just like this again. I mean, I'll get X plane or um, maybe Active Sky, which is n known to really get it as close to the nearest METAR available. So, and they do phenomenal stuff with hurricanes, folks. I, I mean, I can't. Oh, uh, what I've seen in the past and way past generations of it. What they might be able to do today would be mind-boggling. But anyway, we're cruising along. So Crossville has a light thunder shower north and east. Okay. We'll just kind of watch what we have ahead of us here as we ease on to Mid-America Airport. The goal, will we see that the uh, would have been 400 AGL that's what 200 above means probably not we're probably enough METARs past that it probably will not right now I would well, we'll see we may actually have some thunder showers building here again Okay, you know what I'm gonna do before we get too much further? Cause come about Nashville, I wanna be thinking, you know, let's bring in the browser one more time. Fingers crossed on the right page. Okay, so here's what we're showing on Sky Vector right now. The blue box is a SIGMET, significant weather, usually convective. Um, here's our line. Here, let me uh, pull it up. Here's our line here. Here's Crossville, which is where... Oh, we've lost it here. Where'd it go? Now, let me just... Yep, we're no longer showing anything on the map. Oh well, that was fun though for a while, but you can see we should be picking it up. 
There's Crossville. Again, Crossville here is right up here. So. So. Again, it's all going to boil down to what's being populated on the sim, which default weather, even in real world, isn't necessarily going to give us what we're looking for. Because right now we should be flying through over or through a little bit of a line right here. So once we reach Nashville, we'll get into the arrival and uh, looking at our descent. So enjoy the music for a little longer, folks.
All right, folks, now I was just off there, not in La La Land, but just trying to learn a couple things about Nightbot and all that we use. Uh, while I thought I'd take advantage of the time here, I see we're coming into Nashville. So while we come into Nashville, let's go ahead and pull it up. I'm going to get rid of Alanta right now. Pull up charts. Okay, we're going to take a look at a couple things here. Second. Okay, we're about 34 minutes out, so... Alright, so, real quick, we're on the Centralia 2 arrival. Uh, it is an RNAV arrival, meaning we're going to go to Centralia, but then we're going to fly to Hobbits, Heiko, Dutmai, Troy, and then in. These, between Hosviz and Dutmai, those are actually not off a of radio. So those are actually fixed uh, intersections, fixed fixes, if you will, out there in space floating around in one location, never moving. So, All right, so as we come into Nashville, so we're going to basically, for one, four, left and right, uh, fly over Centralia VOR, 15 decimal zero, uh, track outbound 267 to Havas, then 284 to Eichel. Now, Eichel, as you look at the chart, says we got to be at 7,000, so we're going to make sure that's all dialed in properly. Uh, from Eichel to Dutmai, from Dutmai to Troy VOR 116.0. And then we're going to track out on the 228 to intercept the uh, localizer for 14 left. Okay, the only altitude restriction we have here, folks, is Eichel at 7,000. Uh, other considerations, first off, ATIS 128.7, uh, 459 is the airfield elevation, and this is an RNAV-1 approach, so we need DME, IRUs, GPS required. All right, so that takes care of this chart. Now, what I'm going to do, just hand down a little, pop that up. Um, so from BNA, we're going to ENL, to Havis, to Eichel. Okay, now Eichel, okay, over here, if you click this, you get to work with the airway and the fix. Right side, altitudes and speed constrictions. We're going to seven.
All right, so we got it in there. Let's just make sure. Dot my toy doesn't matter. Then we're going to get on to, we'll look at it here. Let's go to the one. Oh, I picked the wrong one. second let's try that again like all of a sudden it lost continuity oh there we go all right so for one four right uh, again there's your ATIS approach tower and ground then we've got the information we're going to look at when we go to the red nav page. We need it to say 1099. Let's do it. Let's do it. Because I'm on the wrong chart. Hang on a second, folks. Helps to be on the right chart. One for left. There we go. One 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 decimal one five BTC. One thirty nine. There's our frequency, which is correct. Of course, one four one. Now I got one three nine. Let's see if I can put it in that way. Okay, that way we're on the right course. Slope three degrees. Okay, so we've got that page set up. All right, so we're gonna come off Troy, 228. They're saying 214, 228, folks. We're gonna end up on the same point, coming in on the localizer. At Hetsu, 11 miles out. They're showing 2,200 feet. Let's dial it up just a smidge. 2,200 feet all the way to Wumont. Okay, so 139 Wumont, 2,200 feet. Add, or, add and on glide slope. ILS decision altitude and height. Altitude 2000, height 642 MSL, 200 AGL. So, when you think about that approach earlier, folks, he only had 400 AGL. Good job, pilot. Then we have our missed approach information and again requirements. We will get into something we do see here as correct, incorrect in the sim. Okay, again, Hetsu, Uma, Jugig, right on in. Okay, so Pappy's on the right reel. That is correct. There's our missed approach again. Uh, we have not done the calculations and we are starting to get close, so we will. But I'm gonna gather to say 140. So 860 feet of, oops, wrong one, 743 feet a minute to maintain the three degree glide path. And we don't have a time, so. We'll just, uh, by the time we get to 200, we should see the runway. If not, we go around. Finally, minimums. Vitar has to have a 642 or higher. It's 200 AGL. 
Also, for this runway, folks, there are no approach lights. So the RVR is 40. Runway visual range, that narrows it down to how far it can see. Or three quarters of a mile on the uh, uh, METAR. The METAR at that, once it gets below a mile, I believe starts saying RVR. Let me rephrase that real quick. If there's an RVR at the airport instrument, it'll read it and report it. Otherwise, we go by the three quarter of a mile. All right, and now currently, like I said, I believe this is Notum out right now. So they're flying the RNAV. We're going to keep it simple, folks. And just fly the ILS. All right. You know everything's set here. 43 miles out. Now, we will not activate approach phase until right, uh, Eichel dot my area when we're under control when we're controlling the speed but for now we're gonna go next phase next phase and fill this in okay q and h let's just pull it up Okay, so winds are zero eight zero at three. Okay, so runway 14 is a good se uh, selection wind-wise. Again, remember I told y'all this guy came in with a pretty, pretty uh, stiff tailwind. Whoops, I need that. All right, so we're looking at uh, Q and H 3004. Well, I don't see a decimal. Let's see if it'll let me put it in. Okay, temperature, 30. Back and wind, 080, and it is a just a puff in the air. All right, so again, one four left. MDA is right up there. Six four two. Now you could put six four two here. M being MSLs. How I do this. This one being the decision AGL. So you make you know you figure you know my system works for me. So I'll just do six four two. Okay. Now we are looking at a. Uh, Landing speed of 128, approach 135 to 140. We'll get it right about 135. Uh, F speed for the flaps, that's full at 144, 181 for slats only. 200 is when we can start applying flaps. All right, and we are currently 19 out. Okay, so we got the runway in there, we've got the star, we've got navs, ILS, bearing distance. I don't know how to set that up. Okay. 
Okay. Okay, we put our Q and H in. Temperature, mag, trans. Did we? Yep. And MDA. All right, VAP. 135 officially, 140 is probably what I'm going to carry down the approach. Auto brakes. Let's go medium. Engine out. Time enough. Plenty of extra fuel. I'm going to go ahead. Not yet. I'm going to give this a try. We're going to get it right down to three and then click it. Okay, altitude button pull, open descent. We could do that, we're not. Uh... Okay, I wanna do one more thing here. Okay, we are descending. Let me uh, check something. We don't have a center up right now. Okay, weather is minimal. Okay. We're inbound, folks. I hope you all enjoy. Thank you for flying with Mike. And uh, uh, I really hope you've uh, had a great week. Folks, it is Friday, so be safe over the weekend. Uh, we got a big fair kicking off here where I live. And uh, uh oh, the co pilot has arrived. Miss Ella is in the house. My one year old grand. Daughter. You want to fly the airplane too? <laughs> All right. But Miss Ella is in the house. Only one year old. 
but uh, she is in the house. He probably will. You can leave the door open, hun, if you want. So, anyway, so yeah, visit from both the CEO of Flying with Mike, my wife, and the co the co-pilot, Miss Ella Bella. Folks, I am going to go ahead and kill music as we head in. And, uh... But truly, uh, as we were saying before, nicely interrupted by the first officer, Ella, um, I hope you all have a good weekend. Uh, Friday, keep be safe. Um, we love to see you on Monday. Actually, only working a 24-hour shift come Sunday. I'm off two days. Sound the hallelujah chorus. Um, and uh, back to work Monday. Granted, 24 hours off only. Back onto a 48. But hopefully these begin to ease a little. So, we are about to test the title here does x planes real world weather match so we'll see folks we'll actually find out here oh roughly 14 minutes from now Just checking. Something didn't look right. All right. So let's, uh, well, you know, it's starting to kind of look like it did this morning here. Now, I know we a theory at work within Flying with Mike. Because of that flight in South America, we think it's a couple hours behind. So a couple of METARs back, maybe two, three, four, who knows, hours possibly. Uh, but because um, we ran into that on a flight. So uh, we'll see how that goes. And by the way, any questions, comments, or anything, please feel free to put them in the uh, chat room. We'd love to talk with you or talk amongst the uh, people that are joining in as we're getting ready to go into the weather. Currently, the weather radar is clear, as you can tell. Quick look uh, versus uh, Sky Vector. Uh, here, let me uh, bring up the browser here. So you can see, yeah, there should probably be some storms showing up there, but how far back do they go? I'm going to do this. Doesn't even show the clouds, really. Yep, not really. I'm going through each of them over here, as you see, folks, and not seeing much. So, you know, that's what we kind of expect. Uh, do I expect a minimums approach? No. But it would sure be cool. <laughs> All right. So currently we have been in the air about an hour and 16-ish on the minutes. So hope you all have enjoyed. Um, 
So if you'd like to see more, as the message just came up says, we'd love you to click that heart. Because it's free. Following us is free. Now, if you want to subscribe, that's a whole different ball of wax. That does cost. That also allows you add free viewing. But that's on you. You know, that's up to you folks to decide. All right, so we are coming up to 22. Let's make sure everything is done. Okay, we've done that. We're not doing that. We've decided we're getting ready to come up on the uh, transition level. All right, folks, and as uh, um, we know, with my granddaughter in the house, we got about 30, 35 minutes to go on this. So, uh, yes, it says only 11, but we'll rewind it for a recap so you can all see that. Plus, fuss users, oh, sorry, you don't have that ability out of the box. You have to download a program, but at least it's available for you, so. Definitely have weather around us. Alright folks, we're back with you. Sorry about that. Had a quick thing come up here. Okay, we're reaching transition level. All that means is we've reached 18,000. 3022, that is not what we put 18, in down. 18,000 feet. It is indeed 3004. Slide over here. And I'll slide it on down here. Okay. Now this is where I run into trying to figure out where to set the radar. All right. Well, we'll kind of deal with that, but... Er, again, the smattering of storms that we have right now are kind of uh, west of our route at this point over by uh, Carbondale farming well between Carbondale and St. Louis going up that way so we're not going to run into storms I don't think unless we're a day off And fair warning ahead, folks, once we probably get around Centralia to Eichel, I could pull again away from the chat and focus in on the flying, trying to do my best. But uh, 
just warning you ahead of time because we're only 20 miles no not even yeah 20 miles from uh, Centralia okay and again no frequencies pre appear to be showing up on X pilot so fat sim is quiet right now in this area Matter of fact, the only traffic around me is something going towards Terre Haute, playing on the ground at Lambert, St. Louis. One behind me coming either out of Edward, Evansville, or Aramore. Oh, excuse me, folks. All right, let's dial down. But again, thanks uh, for coming aboard to see the A319. I know it was meant to be the queen today in the schedule, but there's just no way we could fly four hours with what we have going on today uh, with the uh, first officer in the house. So we'll just uh, bring this one in and... Uh, call it a day as for tomorrow that one it tomorrow any flying is pretty much canceled pretty much an all-day event I've got to be at so if any time comfortable comes up we'll maybe put something up but folks don't count on it And then again, like I said, Sunday, I'm back at the firehouse working. Monday, I'll be off, so we'll try to put something, to oh, something together for that. Okay, look at the clouds coming. Let's see, can we get a screenshot of that? I thought we just uh, determined that. All right. Comes 10,000, though. Ten thousand feet. Okay, seat belts approach phase. We're getting ready to activate. Okay, seat belts.
Friday off. Life is good, Melvin. Leroy, welcome to the house. Okay, time to take over speed. All right, remember how I said, folks, we're going to uh, activate here. Let's go ahead and do that again. Remember, I said make sure you are on speed control. Don't let it manage or you're dropping to F speed, uh, which means you're going to drag that 140, 50 all the way. <clears throat> okay. So we're just catching up here. Auto approach. Let's go ahead and go to LS. Sides. Okay, uh, we'll get the approach once we get up closer to Troy. It's a little early. Okay, there's Dutmai, and we're headed up to Troy now. I think I may have to... Alrighty, so let's see what kind of trouble we can stir up here at my home airport. Okay, still no traffic. Okay, so we are getting ready to go back into the clouds. So, see what kind of, how we'll do this. little positive note here for what we're trying to do here to see how well X-Plane weather keeps up with the real world weather when you select real world weather.
Okay, we're into clouds at four, th we'll call it 45. Vitar is going to read shouldn't even have below 3100 feet if it's accurate there shouldn't be any clouds it was around 400 to 600 earlier today and that's what we're trying to determine is how far back are the METARs. Okay, so let me pull my chart up here. Okay, we're going to hang at 3,000. You know, see, we're popping out. So I got a feeling the METARs have, have eased. It would be neat if you could roll it back to 730 this morning to see if you got the 400-foot ceiling. Other than going in and setting it yourself. Okay, let's uh, pull back one notch here. Well, so far, so good, folks. I mean, we are popping through ceiling, so 3,100 feet. All right, so let's get into this approach. As soon as we make the turn, we'll set it. Really wish this could just be put somewhere and never get in the way. Twenty five hundred. Okay, we're going to pull back to two ten or two hundred. As we come around, looking for the ILS. Arm it up. Okay, missed approach altitude is two thousand. Okay. All right, folks, and we're right at the edge speed wise here. sure all the lights are on. Go ahead, arm it up. Flaps one. All right. Okay, let's bring it down to 160 now.
laps two. Glide slope. Oh, I got a runway. Okay, so obviously obviously we're not in sync well we might be, I shouldn't say that but we definitely know gear down Gear down. Okay, here we come, folks. There's flaps three. Let's take them full. All right, so we're not going to be running autopilot. We're past One thousand. Ease. Altimeter, set flaps, speed brakes, landing checklist. Airplane's mine. Five hundred. Five hundred. On glide path, on course, landing. Stable. Four hundred. Still on glide path. Three hundred. Three hundred. Hundred above. Get to that chat just a second, Melvin. Let me get my butt off this runway. Oh, well, that ain't what we're at. All right. Down. Let's get the basics. I think we are going to gate four today.
see that very often, do you, folks? Oh, you're not supposed to do that. <laughs> there we go. That's right. Old school power back. <laughs> Look at that. He even said it. Reversers. <laughs> hey, I'm not moving. I'm not going to do this again. Do it again. Brakes didn't set up. Okay, let's see if it's going to stay in place this time. Hey, okay, speed brakes, weather radar. Oh, yeah, I did forget that. Transponder to standby. All right, chronometer. All right, all right. Okay, APU's running, so that's good. Clear that. Okay. And we'll get that cockpit door open and seat belts, fuel pumps. Beacon oh, beacon. Okay, there we go, folks. Now let's go back, take a look at this, and see how we did. Oh, the good thing is it's all in one piece. Right now I saw some chat here while we were... Eighty-two feet a minute. Wow. Thank you there, Mr. Melvin. We appreciate the uh, flowers coming there from way out there in Wyoming. Yes, sir. We're going to really get a good look at it here in a second. First thing we'll pull up, since we have Mr. Melvin Leroy here, uh, let's pull up Volanta. I'm going to do is make that a little bigger. Because what we're going to do here, let me uh, turn that off, there we go, is uh, we're going to go back, review the flight. Looks good. And then 
Oops. I just stop it. Okay, there we go. Yes, I can't do that. Okay. 50 feet a minute at 121 knots. That's what Volanta's saying. Let's zoom it down. Looks like some pretty good cells starting to form up out here. I'd like to know where they're moving. But uh, 50 mile winds, 138 at a whole whopping three knots. <laughs> Hang on. I can simulate that. There we go. <laughs> All right, so that's Volanta. Now, let's get a little more in-depth. We'll use Sim Toolkit for this. After we finish the flight. Okay, so we're going to go to landing reports. Folks, first off, it's your preference. Volanta um, does a great job. Uh, Sim Toolkit has a lot of more tools to it for streaming as well as review of flights in this case. Uh, but here's the deal, folks. They're both very expensive to afford. It breaks everyone's piggy banks in half. Oh, wait. No, they're both free, so probably doesn't. So, yeah, I did say the word, folks, free. So pick your poison. They're absolutely phenomenal to use. Any flight sim they'll run on. So, again, we are using in the toolkit here for Sim Toolkit, landing reports. Just like we just saw on Volanta, here's what Sim Toolkit gives you. All right, gives you one a visual of what you did. Okay, so here's your th runway where the usable part of the runway for landing starts, otherwise known as threshold, and the green dots where you landed. Now, I know little X asked earlier if I landed on the center line. I think I'm pretty close, 10 feet off. Um, it gives you an idea how far down, 1,900 feet, 10 feet to the left or to the right, however it ends up. Over here, though, it takes into account your heading, the ideal, and then tells you the difference. So were you tracking it or not? I was off by 0.5, as you can tell. Pitch, not bad, 4.3. little bit it might have been accounting for a crosswind to try to keep us on the center. Who knows? But uh, 121 actually is a little bit under what was the V ref. Not much, but a little. Counting for the 1.4 Gs. But you know what? The goal when you land is in a little plane. Just as you're about to touch down, you hear the beep the stall warning go off and then you touch that's actually the goal folks are very close to that mine was yelling at me <laughs> so now what i have to uh stress here is must fuss users you can't do this another great training tool comes out of x plane right out of the box Replay. Now, oh, I forgot to. Ooh, dang it. Hang on. Stand by, folks. Roop, I forgot to close some things. Rud, I forgot to get my flight plan. Stop flight. File. By the way, for uh, Millennium Aviation, who I was flying this flight for. VA wise, they had me clocked at 43 feet a minute. I'd love to know what parameters they look at to get that number. Because it always varies. You notice that with Volanta, they had a different landing number than Sim Toolkit. And before you go into replay, folks, always make sure you disconnect. X-Pilot will disconnect you. 
as it did in my case. All right, take two. So we'll go on the toggle, making sure one last time, nothing. Okay, so we got the replay going. And MustFuss users, you got to start that program. Yeah, I know. The maintenance is going to go, I don't believe you even took off. <laughs> But MustFuss users, you got to start a program as you get into the approach to be able to see you, what we're about to do. I can go all the way back, folks, to when I started the sim. I don't think I want to go that far. I don't want to relive it all the way. But let's try right there, see how that looks. Go a little further back. And I can go back, forward. That looks like a good point. Actually, let's see where we are in relation to the right way. There's where we'll start. Fire up the grand finale. Now, I will admit, folks, the autopilot still has an auto is to my right flying. Now I have it, you can tell. That actually is, wow. Hi folks, not a lot to complain about there. Other than I brought that nose gear down off the line. But man. Thank you, Mr. Melvin Leroy. Now let's take a look from the Hawker 125 vantage point. like I'm out there at the hold line almost watching them come in and out. We would go up to the tower but it won't show anything folks. I've tried it a million times and But we'll uh, take a look from Melvin Leroy's seat. You know, you're not supposed to be using electronic devices while we're in there, especially in landing and takeoff. Not much. Let's take a look at the other side where Hawker's sitting. Okay. 
Now, funny story about this airport, folks. You just saw it here. Let me back it up. Right here. When we got good crosswinds going, oh, is it fun to watch them come in on touch and goes? They get wobbly as can be, man. It is downright. It gets a little scary sometimes how wobbly they'll get. Because those trees do a good job of blanketing it. If you get that opening. at it from the front. Well, folks, welcome again to Mid-America. We thank you all for coming out and being a part. Uh, we thank little Lex for the follow. And uh, we hope you all enjoy the rest of your weekend. Uh, we won't be able to fly, like I said, tomorrow um, due to commitments we already have. But uh, thank you again so much. And if you are new, we'd love you to click follow and join us on our next adventure. So for now, let's go ahead and head back over to our jetway. Uh, let me do a couple things here while I'm looking for maybe a way to send this over to someone. Let's see who's out there. Well, let's go on over to a man that flies on PazCon and see how this is going. Folks, again, it's been a pleasure. Iron Condor Simulations will send this to. And uh, hope you all have a great and glorious weekend. See you again Monday. God bless you all. Have a great day. I know. <laughs>